There's a Wichita woman who's done better than a trifecta. She's performed on Broadway, at the Metropolitan Opera, in Carnegie Hall, and at the Lincoln Center in New York City. Carla Burns has had quite a run, and she's not done yet. We caught up with her at her latest performance at Wichita's newest theater called The Forum. That's where Carla was making her first stage appearance after being told she would never sing again. I, she loved music. I loved music. She was thin and beautiful. I loved music. <laughs> we heard the breeze in the trees singing weird melodies. Called me the round pound of sound. So I later called myself the brown round pound of sound. Carla Burns has always been known for her powerful voice. This Wichita native has performed in some of the most respected opera houses, theaters, and performance halls in the world. Love down, hearted frail, and we played that as part of the blues. This amazingly talented woman was also the first African American to win an Olivier Award. That's Britain's most prestigious award for theater, and the equivalent of winning a Tony. My father was a jazz and gospel pianist. And so every Saturday night, we would sit around the piano. We always had a piano. And we would get ready for church on Sunday morning. Carla lost her father when she was just seven years old. But that early musical influence left a lifelong imprint on her. Her mother gave her great advice that would set her up to be a success. She told her, no one's going to give you anything. You have to go reach out and grab for it. If the opportunity is there and you choose not to, then that's your fault. So do what you can to get the opportunity. Carla says she's had a dream to sing from the time she was a very little girl. That's what I had the goal to do, to sing, and I don't care where it is, but I was drawn to the musical and didn't know about Broadway. I didn't know that. From the time she was just eight years old until she was in high school, Carla would just walk around the block singing. Back rub, back rub, feel so good. Back rub, back rub, we knew it would. But by the time she got to Wichita West High School, her goals had changed. I thought I'd be a math major. Yeah, that's what I wanted to do, numbers. Thank goodness her high school vocal teacher steered her in another direction. Otherwise, the world would have been deprived of some pretty amazing performances. On the record, and she said, kiddo, you can really sing. You need to know that. Since you have to count in music, Carla says she felt this was a good way to combine both of her loves. After high school, Carla decided to stay close to home. It was really weird because I, I had scholarships to go other places and decided to stay here. And because Wichita State had such a wonderful music program, how, why would you go away when you have the opportunity to study with some fabulous people right here? But the path wasn't easy. Carla decided she wanted to combine her love of music with her love of theater. At that point, that wasn't an option. So once again, she had to blaze a new trail. At the time, theater and music were separate. Theater was in liberal arts and music was in fine arts. Since music theater is a field where very few succeed, Carla's mother wanted her to get an education degree to fall back on. I, I always say my college career, it was just, it was a career because I was there forever. Uh, I was determined to get the degrees that I wanted to get. No one knew that, but I was doing some strange things to make sure I got the classes I wanted. Some of those classes actually made her life more difficult. I was never what I was, where I was. In the music department, I was considered as an actor. In the theater department, I was considered as a singer. So they asked me to do a little of both in each one of those places, but I was never what I was, where I was. Carla's career has also been plagued by health issues she has to overcome as well. They tested me for 250 allergies. I had 140. Two of those allergies were also the sunflower and wheat. Where do we live? Where do we live? You know, so I said, okay. So the health journey was difficult for me because it caused them not to believe I would ever sing. They never thought I would sing, not pass the church choir. I was told that and told a few more things, but I'll keep them to myself. But they didn't want me in the music school. Wow. They said I would never sing. And I thought, well, I believe somebody else has a bigger plan and a better plan. I just got to get all this other stuff figured out. To get it figured out, she was in a doctor's office six days a week three times a week for allergy shots, and then she saw a speech therapist the other three days a week. I don't know who paid for all of this, Sierra, 
But I'd say to those kids out there who have a widowed mom or that are alone and don't have much that they think they could ever do, somebody, an angel fell upon my life and took care of those things. And there is somebody, there's somebody that will help you, take care of you. You have to make it matter though. In other words, you have to have the tenacity, the drive, the will. You have to yearn to do what you do. And then you have to dream it. You really do. And then you have to, you have to pursue it. Possibilities become probabilities. And then they become realities. Like all successful people, Carla had her share of critics too. I had so much energy. They just didn't know quite what to do with it at all, really. Even though she was attending WSU on a scholarship, not all of her teachers were fans. In fact, one told her. That I'd never sing and that I, I shouldn't try. I should be an engineer. I'm cute, I'm funny, but I'd never sing. And I don't want to tell you. <laughs> At one point, she was even kicked out of the music department. Um, and the very day that I was told that, Dr. George H. Gibson saw me crying. I was weeping. I said, well, George, they told me that I shouldn't be here, that I shouldn't sing. And he excused himself from there. And he came back. I didn't know where he went. And he said, do you really want to sing? I said, well, yes, George, I want to sing. He said, well, I've just been to the dean and gotten you readmitted. He said, but if you don't really want this, then don't waste my time or yours. Sometimes what seems to be the worst thing that happens to us turns out to be the best thing that's ever happened to us. That was certainly the case for Carla. In the next 16 weeks, I took voice from him. He changed my life. He changed my life. I was a winner and a finalist in every major competition that I entered. After graduating from WSU, Carla went to Oklahoma City to audition for the Lyric Theater. I had a journey in front of me that I didn't know what it was going to be to get to Broadway and to get to the Metropolitan Opera. With her mother's words of wisdom still in her head, she threw herself into her work. Make sure that every opportunity that you can latch onto, that you take that opportunity and run with it. After Showboat closed, Carla headed home again. I'm back in Wichita, singing down the streets, looking at the stars, being grateful that I had the opportunity. Even though she had received accolades for her performance, Carla still fought to get her next role. Shortly after returning to Wichita, she heard Showboat was going on a national tour. So I started calling the Houston Grand Opera, which was the producer of the Showboat that was going. Nobody answered. Nobody answered. It got to be Christmas time, and I would call like every day. You have to have drive and tenacity. No one was answering, and then finally, Somebody answered the phone. They told her they were holding auditions in New York City and Carla hit the road. And I go to the auditions. There were 1,300 women that auditioned for the show and 300 of them looked like me. So I sat there. They didn't see me the first day. They had too many auditions. I came back the second day. They saw me. But they didn't get to see much of her your best 16 bars. That's it, you don't get to sing an entire song. Then rumors started that the part had gone to a veteran actress, and after four weeks, Carla thought she was out of the running. Little did she know, they were trying to find her. So they lost my phone number twice, and I finally got called, and I got cast in the national tour of Showboat. You do them. no you won't. When there's any working to it, I'm the one that's gotta do it. When it's raining, who's the fella? The whole umbrella, selfish as a man, Whoa. Talking about the will of God, mistakes that happen, and somebody else is in control of that, of the truth and what you're supposed to be doing. After touring and receiving glowing reviews all along the way, Carla's show moved to Broadway. And there we are, wow, on the Great White Way. All that work was not for nothing, it was for everything. She played the part so well, she was nominated for a Tony. That's when things really took off. They were calling me to tell me that People Magazine wanted to interview me, and I'm in Time Magazine, and 
I, I couldn't believe this, you know, and then all of a sudden all the awards started pouring in. The next thing she knew, she was performing in Cairo, and then another amazing call came in. And said, the Mets called, and I went, wow, they want me to sing the national anthem. This is great. And they said, no, no, it's the one without the S. And I went, the Met. The Met, that's the opera house. The Metropolitan Opera called me. The Met is not easy. I, I never thought I would have that kind of a career. Carla's career was about to take another turn. Coming up after the break, we'll tell you what other field she set a record in. You're watching It's All Good. Right before the break, we told you Carla Burns was raking in the awards and honors. Although she spent most of her time on stage, she also made numerous recordings, like this one that Time Magazine listed as one of the best recordings of the 80s. With a career in high gear, Carla faced another health issue, one that would change her path forever. Carla began having trouble breathing. It got worse and worse until one day she drove herself to the emergency room. When doctors took her into surgery, they found a 9-pound, 10-ounce goiter in her neck. Before she was taken into the operating room, her doctor warned her. She said, there's some little nerves in there. We, I really want to be careful, but you can't tell if you've got them, if you've touched them in any way, which could cause major destruction, but the, you can't see them. If they are destroyed in any way or hurt, it could damage your voice so badly that you could never change pitch again. When she came out of surgery. Did I never sing again? I was declared disabled because I could barely talk. And my life has been the theater. My life has been music. And all of a sudden, I couldn't even, in my opinion, teach anyone else how because I also couldn't, so I couldn't use my skills. I couldn't use anything about myself. Boy, is that depressing. But you don't give up, I just, and I'm still working to make it better, better, better all the time. The journey back has taken years, and it hasn't been easy. And I just determined I'm going to drive, I will do whatever I can, because if I don't do the work, it can't get done. Thus life began to change a little bit, just in hopes. With three or four notes, you start. Just three or four. Or else he wouldn't have gone so very far from me. Got to St. Louis blues, just as blue as I can be. Oh, I think you never stop working on the voice. You never stop working on the skills that you have. That's what this is like. I compare it to your car. Do you put oil in your car once? No, and think it's going to run a lifetime? No. Despite being told that she would never perform again, Carla went back to the basics. And I said, well, you just have to try. You have to know that whatever this is and whatever this part of your journey is, you must take advantage of those who want to help you, making a way for you to get this done. <laughs> It doesn't make any sense to me. I don't know why it's happening, but I know that if I don't try, if I don't put my foot forward, I'm never going to do it again because no one can do this for me. Everybody ought to have a maid, someone who's as busy as a bumblebee, and even <laughs> oh, your bumblebee Jesus. as graceful as, as a grouse. Quivering in the empty room. Jiggling in the living room. Giggling in the dining room. Wiggling in the After other diligently room. working on her voice for years, Carla decided to make a comeback at the grand opening of the Forum Theater back in her hometown. Thought I'd be once more free. <laughs> when you come to think of such things, I met you have the rights that all others. Can you imagine what it will be like when I Kathy Page Hopman and Kevin Conley run the theater. They say it was the perfect platform for her. She's, she's been out of performing Broadway shows for half a decade because of health problems. Mm -hmm. And uh, this is a pretty significant leap for her to come do this show in front of a crowd and not have a, uh, a full idea of what her abilities are. She's a prideful woman and she wants to do the best show that she can do. And uh, she had to get comfortable with 
doing this show. She was, it was really neat to watch her grow through that process. I've known Carla since we were um, 17 or 18 years old. I adore her. I love her. I've seen her go through everything. And then going through the process of uh, um, the removal of the goiter and losing her singing voice, which for a performer, a singer like Carla, that's like losing a major part of yourself, a little bit of your soul. And um, what all of us wanted to do as her friends is was to get her back on stage, to get her working again. And what better place to do it than in an environment where you feel safe, where everyone is cheering for your success. We want her to be successful. Oh, me with this bad leg. With that bad leg. Oh, well, yes, sir, it'll do it good. So you get back on stage here. Mm -hmm. What did it feel like? Be back. <laughs> Everybody told you it wasn't going to happen. It wasn't going to be possible. <laughs> well, you know, we're still not sure. <laughs> but the good part is I'm surrounded by people, a lot of people that I know, which is they're people that I performed with before, almost all of them. It's an incredible opportunity. Um, do I feel that it is perfection at this point? No. Do I feel like that I want to continue to work on this project to do the best that I can. Something yes. familiar, something peculiar, something for everybody comedy tonight. And my voice is different now. It's, uh, it's different. It's always been a low voice, but I'm, I'm working to connect the low and the high. She plays Medea later this week. Stunning surprises, coming disguises. Of actors out of sight. This path is one that I know God has put me on and that I do the best every time he gives me an opportunity. It took other people caring, but it took my drive to do it. And that's not bragging on me. That's just when you seem lost and you have nothing else and nowhere else to go, who do you believe in? First, I believe in God. And secondly, I believe he believes in me. And so you have to find a way. If you can't get over the mountain, you go around it. If you can't go around it, you go through it. However you need to get there, but you just can't stop. In a lot of ways, Carla says her career has paralleled that of another famous Wichita native, Hattie McDaniel, who was the first African-American woman to be nominated for and to win an Oscar. She won the award for a role as the maid in Gone with the Wind. She does Showboat. She's like the first movie of Showboat. She is like cast in the one of the first um, stage shows of Showboat. And so was I. That was one of the first things that I ever did. She actually, before she capped her teeth, had a space. I have a space. Oh yeah, we, I mean, just really weird stuff like that. Both women also had exhibits dedicated to them here at Wichita's African American Museum. Don't act like that. Where well, you do, no you won't. <laughs> always imitate me and always aggravate me. Then in spite of everything, in spite of all the grief you bring, expecting me to love you true. Carla says her next goal is to play Hattie in a one-woman show called High Hat Hattie. And if watching her in action in this show is any indication, there's no doubt she'll do it. Get so excited. Something for everyone. I'm tonight. From winning an Olivier to her Tony nomination and her Drama Desk Award, that little girl who sang walking through her neighborhood looking up at the stars has now become one herself. When I think about all of this, it's, it's really a journey beyond my belief, and it's mine.
Carla has performed all over the world, including England, Egypt, Spain, Scotland, and France. If you know someone who has had a successful, inspirational, or motivational story to tell, well, we want to know about it, too. We've made it very easy for you to tell us. You can go to one of these websites, or you can contact us through Facebook, Twitter, or you can even send us a letter. Be sure to give us a name, a number where you can reach them, and tell us what they're doing that you think makes them so special. Coming up next week on It's All Good. One thing it got him into was making some of the highest quality and most unique guitars in the world. This Derby, Kansas man actually handmade 18 string guitars. Find out which famous people played them. Thanks for watching It's All Good. I'm Sierra Scott. If you have a dream you think will make the world better, don't let anything stop you. It's All Good with Sierra Scott. Brought to you by Central Security Group. Peace of mind you can afford.